Let's, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, indeed, we have confidence. Because you live, Lord, you've given us hope beyond the grave. You've given us life to the full. The lilies we see this morning are evidence that death does not have the final say in our lives. But because you live, we shall live also. And for that, we give you our thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers, sisters in Christ, I see that you've gathered here this morning on a cool, quiet, even kind of misty morning. This is the time of day when things are beginning to spring back to life following a, a dark nighttime of rest and peace. The sun has absolutely burst into action, breaking the darkness of the night and warming us with its light. And when that sun hits, I burst into action as well, opening my petals, displaying the beauty that God has given to me. And I also see that right here in front of your church, many of my brothers and sisters have already opened their petals, displaying their whiteness and that sweet, sweet smell of life that they offer. The many lilies that I see up here this morning tell me that something wonderful has just happened. Now that's quite a refreshing change from these last 40 days of Lent that we've been walking through, and especially the last three days. I was in a garden that was surrounded by death and loss. Now, a cemetery filled with tombs, that's not a place that you expect to find life. The people who are buried in a place like this are all loved by someone. They're people that are deeply missed. A cemetery can be a rather depressing place, to say the very least. We lilies have been planted here to bring well, a semblance of life to a place where death can be so stark and so obvious. Well, when the dawn of that very first Easter morning came, I saw something that I have seen many, many times before. Women were coming into the garden to take care of the bodies of their loved ones. Mary Magdalene, and the other women had brought along spices for the body of their Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Now, everyone around Jerusalem had seen what had happened and the terrifying things from earlier that week. This Jesus had been arrested in the middle of the night, taken illegally before the religious leaders before sunrise, sent on to that Roman leader Pontius Pilate, and given a very questionable sentence of death on a cross on a dead tree, it was clear that he had been very wrongly put to death. The charges were all made up. The beating he had to endure, it was worse than the law even demanded. The crowds were laughing. They were spitting at him. They were challenging him to prove that he was God. Why did that have to happen? And these women who came early that morning, they were still in shock. The dark, heavy shroud of death just covered them. Their hope and joy, long gone. The one whom they had called Lord had been taken away from them in such an unfair and unreasonable way. The cross, it absolutely crushed their hopes. The stone that now covered the entry to the tomb had rumbled into place. They weren't going to be able to move it. Even the, the beauty of the garden surrounding them was not enough to lift their spirits. Death ruled the day. Or did it? You see, there's something you need to know about me. A lily to understand why that dead tree called the cross is not the end. Before I became this beautiful lily, I started out as a plain old boy.
boring bulb. I was planted into the ground, and I died. Now, don't look shocked. That's the way things work with flowers. Unless a seed or a bulb falls into the ground and dies, it does not produce. So, what does this falling into the ground and dying have it to do with Easter? It is exactly what your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for you as his child. Behold, the life-giving tree of the cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Now that, I understand, is what you were looking at during your Lent midweek services all the way through Lent. You turned your eyes toward the cross of Jesus Christ, which the writers of the New Testament call the tree. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. Now, the cross is empty now, of course. Its work is complete. The crucified Savior was taken down from the tree, and he was buried, just as he himself had said that he would be, buried in the earth like a seed. And Jesus said that dying was involved in that very process of bringing life. A seed falls into the earth and dies, otherwise nothing can grow and sprout. You bury a seed so that new life may sprout and grow. I know that. I've been through it. A bulb, it's planted in the ground, and it dies. From that death comes a new green stalk that shoots up through the ground, and then a head, and then these beautiful flowers. But had I as a bulb not died first, I wouldn't be here before you this morning as this beautiful flower that is full of life and color today. Only through death could there be life and hope for me. But I'm not the only one who has been through this process of dying and living to bring color and beauty to your life. You see, so has your risen Savior Jesus. Maybe this morning you think, well, the cross alone should be back up in front of you today. That is what we focused on the whole season of Lent. Perhaps, well, maybe it should be here, empty and glorious. But the cross, it's an entirely dead thing. The growing tree from which the cross had been made had to be chopped down, cut into pieces, and then put back together in the shape. No longer does the tree of the cross should display green leaves or lush branches. It has no hope of ever producing fruit. Not only is the cross an instrument of death, it's an entirely dead thing. It will never grow to become anything beautiful or alive. And that's why on this early Easter morning, the tree of the cross and the front of this church have been covered with something that's full of life and hope. Lilies like myself. You see, your Savior did not stay in the ground dead and buried. Instead, Easter is a day filled with life, with hope, with incredible beauty, not death. Mary and the others were met at the tomb not with the rank stench of death, Instead, they came face to face with life and hope. When they arrived in the pre-dawn darkness, they noticed that that massive stone had almost been picked up and pushed to the side, rolled away. They looked in, and Jesus wasn't there. At first, they panicked. Oh, somebody stole the body. Where had they taken him? I mean... Death is bad enough, but now, not to have a body? That was unbearable. The darkness, the, the coldness of that morning just 
cut into those who love Jesus like a knife. But as the sun began to slice through that darkness, and the flowers began opening up to display their beauty, a true sunrise was about to be revealed to those who loved Jesus. Even as they shed tears of desperation, their Lord and Savior was about to say one word that would restore peace and hope. Mary. With that one powerful word, the pall of death was shattered. Jesus was alive. Not a dead cross, not hell itself could keep your Savior and mine dead. Like a seed that is planted in the ground and dies before it springs back to life and beauty, your Lord and my Lord also had to die before he could spring back to life this day. It was your sin, my sin, that had killed him. We drive those sharp nails into his hands and feet when we fall away from the Lord in our lives. But this was all part of God's plan that this would happen. Jesus died and was planted in the tomb as the payment that God required for our failures. And if the Lord had not accepted Jesus' payment of his life, Jesus would still be in the ground, dead, buried to this day. You and I, we'd be just as dead and decayed as he would have been. Without Jesus, hell would have been our final home. But on this day, you and I rejoice that heaven is our home. Death cannot threaten us forever. And even though you and I are going to have to face death one day, unless the last day comes first, that's not the end of the road. Because Jesus is alive, you also will sprout and live just as the beautiful Easter lily does. Like Mary, you and I will also see the Lord forever but in our case, at his side in heaven. The sun has risen today. We have hope that springs eternal. Jesus lives, and so do you and I. So, to see that dead, ugly cross surrounded by lilies like me, it's a thing of beauty. Easter is about life, and life to the full. The beauty of the lilies gives you just a little taste of what heaven will be like. For you, a child of God, whom the Lord calls by name and loves dearly. The living lilies point you and me to the wonderful news we celebrate on this Easter morning. Satan defeated. Death is no longer in charge. We too will sprout, grow, and shine for eternity. You and I have that promise through faith in Jesus that one day we will be face to face with the Lord who created us and who loves us. Heaven awaits. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of our risen and living Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the, this beautiful news of our Lord's resurrection keep you in the true faith and love of our Jesus Christ forever. Amen.